And coach, for the second year in a row, you head over to uh, Lipscomb's Allen Arena. As we talked about a little bit earlier, uh, you've had some very, very good success on that floor, not only against Lipscomb themselves, but uh, against the other teams in the tournament the previous year. Um, you, 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 get a, you get a bye and you get to watch a couple of teams play. And I know you're, you're, you're watching the first game intently as you're scouting uh, the Mercer game on the first day of the tournament because, of course, they've swept the regular season series, and you know you're probably going to see them again. What kinds of things were going through your head while you were watching that game? Well, you know, you talked about having um, a first-round bye. I was a little concerned about that because I knew that whomever we played, they would have a game, you know, a tournament game under their belt. And sometimes that first game, a little jittery, uh, and they would have the jitters out, and it would be our first day, you know, to, to compete. But, you know, as we're sitting there watching the game, uh, I will admit, Admit deep down, I wanted Mercer to win uh, because uh, you know that game was the one that really, really counted. Uh, and our players, they they had that same sense. They wanted to play Mercer one more time, uh, you know, during the season. Uh, even though they had swept us, we still had, you know, we had some confidence, and that's who uh, we wanted to see. And and that that's who we met, you know, in our first round game uh, up at the tournament and it turned out a lot better than what the two previous games did. Well, Coach, you had a lot of, and I was there, and I, you know, and you had so, so much uh, uh, inspiration to give to not only your returning players who've seen this all before, but to your new players who knew that this is where you wanted to be and this was their goal. And, uh, you know, you, you said to them, uh, you know, if you, if you can't get up for a game, like this, you said virtually the same thing the next day with Jacksonville. But but uh, um, you basically said, you know, this is this is why you're here. This is why you pick up a basketball when you first learn to play uh, to get to your conference tournament and eventually go on to the NCAA tournament. So uh, I think that really got the got the gals uh, a little bit amped up before the game, and as a result, they were able to come out and uh, really kind of put the screws to Mercer when they needed to. When when. The Lady Bears came out tough as well, Courtney Ford, Latoya Jackson. Um, but uh, your ladies responded in kind. Uh, well, you know, that's the one thing. When you get to the tournament, the conference tournament, especially, you know, in, in more of a mid-major conference, uh, if you do not win your conference tournament, you're not going to go to the NCAAs. So it was always win or go home, and we did not want to go home. We were not ready for our season to be over. Uh, so I felt like uh, they were pretty pumped and really motivated and ready to step out on that court. Uh, and face Mercer one more time. Uh, I think that was probably one of the better defensive games that we played uh, all year, and we knew we were going to have to do that. Uh, I think, uh, you know, with with Sierra, with Tish, well, with with the entire team, uh, you know, they were they were fired up and ready to go, and they stepped out on the court and competed like that. Coach, you had uh, Sierra averaging a double-double in the tournament. Gee, big surprise. Uh, Taronda scored, I think, about 40 points in her two games, so averaged almost 20 points a game. Uh, Tish didn't score quite as much because the, the, I, I know the injuries were, were nagging her a little bit down the stretch, but she did grab 17 boards in the two games. And then you had your other players uh, also coming off the bench. We talk about Gwen Washington did a great job. Shannon White, who we'll touch more on in the Jacksonville game, one of the huge factors as to why you won that game. Um, and, and also, of course, the X Factor and Tara Davis. Oh, <laughs> Tara, you know, we haven't mentioned her, but, you know, she, she is our spark. Uh, both defensively and she leads us you know on the offensive end as a coach that's what you want you want out of your point guard an extension of you and she has definitely developed into uh, into that in a very short period of time yes you know she's just a sophomore but she did a tremendous job uh, you know getting buckets when we needed buckets defending when we needed to stop someone uh, on the defensive end so you know she was a definite key to our success uh, this year so I didn't mean to leave her out when I talked about our big three, but you know those three juniors were you know our our backbone. Uh, but she was the one that got everybody going uh, every day in practice. You know I was always on her. You get us started on defense, and she gets out there and she really defends well on on the ball and would come up with some steals and uh, as I say force some force some turnovers. So so Tara did. She did a tremendous job. Uh, you know all season. Uh, but really stepped it up uh, as of late. So, you know, that game against Mercer was, you know, ex extremely exciting. Uh, we, you know, uh, Natalie Pickwell, she came off the bench and hit some, you know, big big threes for us. And seemed seemed like whenever they tried to make a little push, somebody hit a big shot for us. And uh, that's what it takes, you know, to win championships. Coach, moving into Saturday, and I'm interested in your opinion on this. Uh, when I was watching Jacksonville in the semis, 
Uh, it seemed to me, and, and the voice of Lady Bucks, Don Hellman, actually brought this point up, a good point, and I kind of agreed with him. Overall, yeah, they played pretty well, and of course they came out with the victory to face you all on the final day of the tournament, but uh, they were not hitting uh, as many big field goals, especially from, from outside near the perimeter, as uh, you would need really to win a conference tournament. They came out against the Lady Bucks on day three, and all of a sudden they started getting the hot hand from the outside, and it really kind of put a little bit of pressure on you in the first half. Well, you know, John, that's what I said er uh, earlier. Everybody was going to bring their best game whenever they saw that blue and gold ETSU in front of them. Uh, so they did, and all year they had not shot the ball like uh, everybody thought they would this, uh, this season. Uh, and, and that game, you know, to get to the championship, uh, they did not shoot it well from the perimeter, but played well enough to get the win. Uh, so we knew they weren't going to stay cold the whole time, and especially when they saw Lady Bucks in front of them. So they did. They came out, uh, you know, really fired up and ready to play. Big part, I think, because we kept them from going to the NCAAs the previous year. Uh, you know, we beat them in the, uh, I think it was the championship game. Uh, you know, in 07, 08. So we knew that they were going to be ready. They had a lot of seniors. I know uh, they had three that started. Uh, and, and they were going to be ready because they wanted to experience that NCAA. Uh, but we wanted it just a little bit more and played a lot better defensively uh, the second half and kept them from, you know, scoring uh, as, as well as they had the first. Now, the, the one thing I guess that might have been just a, a little bit of help to the Lady Bucks is that. Uh, of course, Virginia Gregoire had been hurt just a little bit, hampered by a little bit of an injury from time to time, but still they had uh, Omite and Hamilton coming on and, and really doing what they needed to do against the Lady Bucks. Meanwhile, ETSU responds only with their top players playing very, very well, as we talked about a little bit ago, but uh, as we also talked about and alluded to, and I want to ask you about, uh, uh, Shannon White keeps your team in it in that first half with 10 humongous first half points, and you go in. Just, just trailing by a few, but still you're within reach. Uh, right, and you know, we needed a spark. And Shannon from day one, when she stepped on uh, ETSU's campus and onto the court, that's the one thing she would bring, and that was a lot of energy. And when I put her in the game against Mercer, I was a little disappointed uh, because she wasn't playing with that same type of passion. So that morning before, uh, you know, getting ready to play Jacksonville, I, I said to her, Shannon, you know, you let me down because you did not give that same type of energy that you, you, you bring to this team. And that's your role. You know, you go out there because you play hard all the time. Uh, and I didn't see that yesterday. And, you know, she looked at me and she said, Coach, I'm going to bring it today. And she backed it up. She just did not speak it. She, she got out there and she proved that she could bring that energy. And, you know, as you said, 10 big first half points. Because if it had not been for Shannon White that first half, we could have been down, you know, by 20 points uh, because we were not scoring well. But her energy, you know, she was diving on the floor. She was just doing those things that a lot of people don't recognize. Uh, but she brought that energy uh, and got everybody else into the game and yeah and that's exactly what she did it's a good point to segue into my next question is of course Shannon gets the momentum going going into the locker room and then you come back out and uh, you, you you get Sierra and Taronda really doing what they need to do hitting the shots uh, they, they you know you, you, you tie it up and you get the lead and then of course next challenge is maintaining that lead and building on it trying to break away from Jacksonville and it seemed like every time the Dolphins got a little bit more momentum Sierra would hit a big three or make a nice move to the basket or Taronda would hit a runner down the baseline and, and of course and we all remember the reverse layup by uh, Taronda later in the second half which should, uh, I arguably thought was maybe the best move of the tournament and uh, those two going down the stretch Sierra with the big shots from outside and then Taronda even with the big free throws down the stretch really kind of closed it out and uh, well secured the second consecutive a Sun title for you well you know that half time uh, was probably a little bit more exciting than anyone would think because we were not up. But everybody was excited and felt good about where we were at that point. Uh, everybody was excited uh, about Shannon and what she had just done to help this team stay in, you know, stay in the game uh, the first half. So, so it was a little bit easier, uh, you know, talk at halftime and, you know, making a few corrections here and there than most people would think. Uh, so, you know, Sierra, uh, you know, she's a, she's a competitor, she's a winner, uh, and, you know, Taronda, and they're going to do whatever they need to do to make sure that this team didn't lose. So they stepped out on the court, stepped their game up a little bit. Like you said, Sierra hit some big outside shots. 
uh, you know, to Rhonda, you know, to me is the the most fun player to watch because she makes some moves and makes some shots that you you normally don't see, uh, you know, at this level and from a female. Uh, so, you know, they, they stepped their game up and made sure that we were going to uh, accomplish that goal and do it back to back and make it back to the NCAAs. And he did just that. And, uh, well, why don't we see all the players and all the great plays and the highlights that uh, got the Lady Bucks to that point again. Take a look at the highlight reel. And then when we come back, we'll talk about the road to, bow road to Bowling Green. While ETSU came into the conference tournament as the number one seed, they'd have to go through two very tough opponents in order to become back-to-back -back champions. First, they'd face Mercer just six days after the Bears beat them inside the Memorial Center to sweep the season series between the teams. Off to a good start, Gwen Washington scored the first five points of the game as the Lady Bunks went on a 10-0 run early in the first period. And then with the starting five making buckets, the bench players came in and kept things going. Eventually, ETSU led by as many as 18 approaching the 10-minute mark. Janelle Jones and the Lady Bears needed an answer. And though they did put together a 7-0 run to get the lead back down to single digits, the Bucks built the lead back up to 16 in intermission. Sierra Evans knocking down the buzzer beater in the lane and then converting the three-point play with no time left on the clock. Fast forward second half, Mercer again looking for a run. Courtney Ford won a three Lady Bears in double digits, and Latoya Jackson with three made threes on the day. But the lead never saw single digits again as four Lady Bucks hit double digits. Gwen Washington with 11 points, Tara Davis 15, including three from beyond the arc. Meanwhile, Sierra Evans reached the 20 point plateau. Another double double for her as she grabbed 10 rebounds in addition. And leading all scores, Taronda Wiles had 22 points including a three-point play with five and a half left in the game. And from there, the lead inched its way up over 20 points, 82 to 60 the final, ETSU heading to the conference championship for the second straight year. And as Belmont fell to Jacksonville, the title bout was set, a rematch of the 2008 championship in the same building. Before they took the floor against the Dolphins, Coach Kemp had some words of wisdom to impart. I didn't sleep well because I'm so excited about what this team is about to do. I stood out there and I said to my staff, if I've got to go out, go in there and give a rah-rah, uh, pump, uh, pump you up speech, there's something wrong with you. Because if you can't get up for a game like this, you don't need to be playing the game. Because, hey, this is what you dream of. This is what you dream of when you uh, first pick up a basketball at age three, four, whatever age it was. Hey, get into Division One, get into your championship game, and having the opportunity to go and play uh, in the NCAA. That's always a dream. Well, right here, you can make it a reality because you took care of business yesterday. You did what you were supposed to do to make it to this point. So now you're here. Now what you going to do about it? It's all about who wants it more. You know what JU can do. You know what they want to do. So it's about who has the biggest heart and who wants it more. And I know who wants it more. I know. I'm looking at you. I work with you every day. I know who wants it more. So you got to go out there for 40 minutes and leave it all out there on the line. Leave it out there. Leave it out there because, hey, we can rest tomorrow. So the A-Sun title on the line, the ETSU and Jacksonville started off back and forth between the teams, but gradually the momentum began to shift toward the green and gold. Lead got up to nine at one point. Finally, Coach Kemp needed a timeout, made some changes on the floor, and Shannon White just dominated the paint as the Lady Bucks fought to stay afloat in the first half. 10 points for White, including a buzzer beater to get the Dolphins lead down to five. Second half, ETSU chipping away still. Toronto Wiles gets things to within four with a jumper on the left wing. Then Letitia Belcher, who grabs 17 rebounds in two days at the tournament, puts one back in to get the game to within two. And finally, on Gwen Washington's three-pointer, ETSU climbs on top for the first time since about the same time back in the first half, roughly the 15-minute mark. Then a three for Evans to back that up gets the lead up to six. Dolphins battle back, though, causing a few turnovers, regaining the lead with a 10-0 run. 
Tara Davis is right wing. But Evans, so many big threes all season, perhaps none bigger than the one that got it back to a one-point game. And then Belcher gets the lead back, just two field goals in the game, but both perfect timing. From there, ETSU gets the lead back up to 10, thanks to Wiles, 11 of her 15 points in the second half, and none more crucial than the free throws. Down to the wire, Tineski Richardson hits two for Jacksonville, but Wiles answering on the other end, and as the clock winds down, just like last year, Belcher holds the final possession as the Lady Bucks go on to win their second A-Sun championship in a row, 58-52 the final. Evans was your MVP, averaging a double-double for the tournament, and Wiles scored 37 points in two days, the most of any Lady Buck, and she received all tournament honors.